This is Twit. I'm going to review the Pono Pono on Before You Buy Today. Oh, cool. I'll, actually, I'll listen to that. I can give you the uh, okay. TLDR. Indeed. I like it. But you don't really need it because uh, what, you, what this bundles is a very good DAC with a head, I, I presume, a good headphone amplifier. Mm. And uh, Sony and others are doing similar things. I, I mean, it, I'm going to definitely say it's good. It's nothing wrong with it. I've been buying a lot of high res music lately. I'm really enjoying like, it. Like, like compared to like I, I have never bought high res music. Oh, it sounds I'm, so much I'm, better. My, You'll my, my, my entire my entire library is two fifty six k ripped from CD. Yeah. So what would what would be the well, maybe we should save this for the show? But it's like what I'm curious to know what would be the difference between just simply buying Flack and then just going to the Pono player instead. The of that. first step is buying Flack instead of you know even Flack at uh, forty four one sixteen. Is going to be much. You you can you know I. It's funny because I remember and I've recounted the story many times uh, of walking by when I was at the screensavers, walking by the Dolby headquarters. They were just around the corner, and a guy goes, Psst, "Leo," and he <laughs> brings me in into their uh, listening room, which is a state of the art listening room with Rebel speakers, and I mean, just really nice. And he did an A B comparison between of uh, Steely Dan. Uh, album, I think it was Gaucho, uh, between the CD and uh, a high, I think it was, a, he did 128 and 192 kilobit uh, MP3. Hmm. Now, it's not complex music, so that's the first thing to say, is it's, uh, you know, it was the, the cut he was playing was a, wasn't very complex, didn't have a lot of instruments or anything, Yeah, but I couldn't that's tell the difference. That's that's a lot of my worry that um, there are. I, I love all the music in my library, but I'm trying to figure out whether I need my No Doubt albums to be in really really high resolutions <laughs> versus my opera albums versus or versus just albums you like so much you just as a matter of courtesy want to get it in the best quality you can possibly well, get. The hard thing see. the hard thing to do is to separate the psychological, you know, the belief that you're hearing it better. Yeah. From the reality. And I think that's almost impossible because you can't. You it's very likely that you cannot, you know, on a waveform, show show the difference. But there may be still a psychoacoustic difference. Hmm. Can you right? ABX test it, Leo? Well, and you can. And uh, and the real problem with AB, you know, with it is that you. It's probably even in blind testing. It's well, okay. I'll, actually, I'll tell you something because um, Scott Wilkinson did a blind AB test with AVS Forum with a large number of people there playing back. They were all uncompressed flack, but high res versus 1641. And, and then he would ask the people, what equipment are you playing it back on? Those who didn't have the capability of playing back high res roughly were 50-50. But people who had equipment capable of, of playing back high res, 80% recognized the difference. And pick mm. the high res files as the high res files. Mm. So that's one example of I'd say ex that's more than statistically significant. But then there's the issue of you and your ears and your playback system. Yeah, I mean, it was a big it was a big deal when I started buying Sonos uh, uh, players. Uh, I, when I when I moved here like a, a while back, I, I had my big Pioneer 100 watt out. Uh, uh, I had my Boston acoustic speakers. I had my 100 watt amp or 200 watt like Pioneer AV amplifier. It just wasn't the sort wasn't something I set up immediately because it was going to be sort of sort of a sort of an ordeal. And then I just never got around to installing it <laughs> because it turned out that what, I re what was really the magic that was missing from my music was the ability to have it all in a central server and be able to play right. any of it anywhere. And I know, I know, I could, I know, I could probably get better quality if I actually set up decent speakers. I just haven't been motivated to do it. Yeah. See, that's the okay, and that's the other part of this. This is a whole chain, right? It's not. This is only the DAC and the amp. Yeah. Then uh, you have to get the music. Uh, it has to le legitimately be high res music. It, uh, and then uh, you have to get good outputs. I'm, I, these I use uh, these Edemotics, uh, the higher end Edemotics, which sound great. Um, this amp is not sufficient to drive my um, 
uh, magnetic planar headphones, the Hi-Fi Man. So I have ordered an amp, a, a FIO a headphone amp, because you really need an amp. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good. It's the good FIO. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's nice and it's it's compact. So, uh, and then then I should be able to wear my nice headphones with these. But the Enomotics are very good, and I would say as almost as good. It's just they're not as comfortable for long term listening. Yeah. However, all that being said, I think. I can hear a significant difference. And if you, it, you asked me to characterize it, the way it, I would characterize the difference as there's a spatial and openness that you get. The instruments feel more separated, more distinct, and you can hear each one clearly and accurately. You hear the highs very clearly. You hear the lows. Instead of being muddy and bassy, they're very clear. And so there's a clarity to the music that's very hard to characterize, but you, I think, can immediately recognize um, and, uh, I think there's a def, I mean, there's a massive difference between MP3s and flax. Yeah, I'm sure. So that's part of it. And the next step is there's, a, I think a difference when you get to 24 bit, mm. but I'm listening on my, and I have a pretty good stereo. Uh, actually, you know, the funny thing is my Ankyo has excellent DACs too. Mm. So my Ankyo DAC, which is the uh, TI DAC. Almost, I can't tell any difference. It sounds the same. And But listening through to high-res, because I just put the high-res music on a little USB thing, push it in my stereo, and then I can listen to it uh, at full resolution, because it's got a good DAC, on nice speakers with a sub, surround, if it's surround music. And it, I do enjoy it better. I was listening to Peter uh, Gabriel's So, which is an amazing album. Uh, yeah. Talking Heads Remain in Light, amazing album with very complex, rich... Um, instrument mixes and stuff, and it just you it, you you hear it all. I feel. I'll I'll have to check it out sometime. I mean, I, I I haven't been I haven't done any upgrades whatsoever to any of my setups. Just yesterday, I've uh, sent back a Samsung 65 inch uh, curved flat panel eight quad HD display that I hadn't I had in the house for about a month and a half for review. And it looked crazy stupid when it was first in my living room, and then now that it's gone, it's like oh. It was nice seeing David Letterman at life size for about a month. Yeah. Yeah. So. You kind of, I think that's what happens is you can kind of get spoiled by um, quality. <laughs> and I, so in one sense, I want to promote this because I think Neil uh, Young has, is on, you know, is, has, is on the right track that uh, we should at least acknowledge that there's a difference. <laughs> but whether... <sighs> It's very hard for me to know whether there's a real yeah. difference. <laughs> so I'm I think actually I, very it, torn on this review. I don't know what I'm going to say. It, it feels it feels a little bit like a Tesla sort of product, where there are people who have the, not just the level of interest in that technology, but also who just want this sort of thing to succeed and right. have the sort of income where they can afford to rebuy Support albums it. for thirty yeah. bucks or so. Yeah, uh, and they're willing to put up with a little bit of inconvenience if they feel as though, look, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm actually supporting this idea of promoting really high quality consumer audio right. files. Rather, we, we've always we've always had really complicated. Hey, look, this is made out of Russian vacuum tubes lifted from a World War a World War Three era a silo bunker. But we don't we haven't been focusing on how about if we buy like the best quality file we can possibly get. I mean, I, even, I mean, even I someone like me, it's like I, I've known that you can buy higher quality albums, but I've just never spurred myself to say, well, what if you get the 10 albums you really, really well, love most everywhere and then just buy those? And I just can't get motivated to do it. Yeah, that's what that's basically what I did. So you'd get, you know, your your operatic stuff. And um, I I only I only have maybe 60 gigs of high res music and, and with high res music, that's not very much, hmm. uh, maybe 20, 20 albums. But it's my favorite stuff. The stuff I want to listen to over and over and over again. And it's the stuff that uh, is in high res. Because some of the stuff I really want is not in high res yet. Um, Ziggy Stardust is not yet available yeah. in high res. And that, if the, with the minute that comes out in high res, I don't care if it's 50 bucks, I would buy it. I mean, it's yeah. only, usually it's $18. But, uh, all right. I'm sorry. But I, you know what? This was a little good little twit bit.